My name is Robert Tagoni, and I write legal thrillers. Um, I have a new book coming out. It's called Wrongful Death, and it is a sequel to The Jury Master, which was my first novel, and it brings back my main character, David Sloan. Uh, David is now living in Seattle with his wife, Tina, and his stepson, Jake. And Sloan is just getting through finishing his most recent verdict, his 18th jury verdict in a row, when a African-American woman walks into the courtroom and says, Mr. Sloan, my husband was a soldier killed in Iraq and I want you to represent me. And Sloan says, who is it you want to sue? And she says, I want to sue the United States government and the United States military. So the scene that I'm going to read is actually a scene where Sloan comes home from um, the trial and he uh, walks in and he's now living in this beautiful beach house with uh, his, the love of his life, Tina, and she's waiting for him. Uh, and he, so I'll start there. Tina sat in one of the two white wicker chairs on the enclosed porch. She lowered a paperback, set it on the navy blue wool blanket covering her legs, and pushed her shoulder length auburn hair behind her ear. Isn't it beautiful, she asked, looking out the plate glass, plate glass windows. Whiffs of maroon from the setting sun streaked the gray sky above the jagged, snow-capped Olympic mountains. Sloan ignored the view, thinking her just as stunning, and wondered how he had not seen it for so many years. Married less than a year, they had known each other for more than ten. Tina had been his legal assistant at Foster and Bain in San Francisco, where inter-office relationships were taboo. He had not even known that she was attending school at night to earn a degree in architecture until the day she told him she was quitting and moving to Seattle. Tina turned back from the view and caught him staring. What? she asked with a hint of a smile, her eyes widening. Sloan kissed her and let the kiss linger. When their lips parted, Tina smiled up at him. What was that for? Just to let you know how much I love you, he said. Well, let me know some more, she said, and he kissed her again. Do you think you could ever write a thriller that didn't have romance in it? I think every book needs to have some romance in it. I think readers expect it, and I think they enjoy it. Um, the question is always how far to take it, and I think I think there's a difference between um, writing romance and writing sex, and I think most readers really love to to read about romance. It's um, it's like anything that that writers write. People want to be taken away. They want to they want to um, go places where they don't get to go. They want to meet heroes they don't get to meet, and they want to have relationships that they don't might not get to have, and so they live through those characters and. And romance is a big part of life, and so I think it needs to be a big part of novels. Now, your characters are married. Is that trickier to build the tension? Some people think so. <laughs> uh, I've had some people say that you know, married sex is boring sex, so you gotta you gotta change it. You gotta do something about that. You know, I think there's some truth to it. There's um, there's different dynamics when people um, when people aren't married. There's obviously that rush of that first meeting that first relationship, uh, the tension that builds with it, does he like me, doesn't he like me, does she like me, doesn't she like me, um, where do I take her to dinner, uh, does she like movies, should I go to a movie, um, you know, what, what do we do, how do I, how do I handle it? And um, when you're married, you don't have those kind of problems, and so when David Sloan gets married to Tina, you know, they, they, they become more comfortable with each other, they know what each other likes, they know what, where to go to dinner. And I think it's like any relationship that people can relate to. Um, you just have to do different things to keep the romance alive when you're married. So what's one of those little things that someone does for you that makes you feel loved? Um, my wife is uh, very wonderful at doing little tiny things to surprise me, whether or not it's uh, you know telling me that she made a, rest, uh, a um, reservation at a restaurant or whether or not it's simply saying, you know what, you need to work today, I know you need to get this book out, I'm going to take, uh, you know, I'm going to take the kids and we're going to go do something. And just giving me time, you know, and that, that is, that, that's probably says more about how much somebody loves you than all the bouquets of flowers in the world that you can buy them. I mean, the flowers are beautiful and, and, you know, they definitely show that you're thinking about someone. But when someone's willing to give their time up for you, especially when time is so precious, I think that's really a way to say, you know what, I love you, I care about you, I care about what you're doing.